This is the GIS News Hour for Friday, October 15, 2010. I am Abigail McIntyre. In the headlines, government to further develop medium-term economic strategy paper for 2011 to 2013. House of Representatives passes Agricultural Feeder Roads Rehabilitation Project Loan Authorization Bill 2010. And Caribbean Week of Agriculture begins on Saturday. Details to these and other stories are next. That is a consumption tax. An individual's consumption is one of the best indicators of living standards. Consumption is therefore a fair tax base. There has been a decrease of over 75% in the exportation of our number one crop. Why add to this already crippled agriculture sector? Madam Chairman, this is preposterous. The annual Grenleck Intersecondary School Debating Competition where speech meets energy. We must always be cognizant of the fact that only one man in a thousand is truly a bond leader of men. The other 909, Mr. Chairman, follow women. Public policy, morality and responsibility, growth and poverty, the legal system. Get ready to watch the action on television. The Grand Lake Intersecondary School Debating Competition. Powering bright ideas. Welcome back, viewers. The Grenada government will work on further developing a medium-term economic strategy paper for the three-year period 2011 to 2013 as part of efforts to ensure economic management. Plans in this direction were outlined by Governor General Sakar Glean during the ceremonial state opening of the third session of the 8th Parliament on Friday morning. Sir Carl Glean says Grenada was not immune to the effects of one of the deepest recessions experienced in the last 75 years, and as a result, it will continue to pursue a program of sound economic management to meet basic ongoing obligations. One way government intends to do this is by focusing on the transformative sector to lay the foundation for sustained growth. We believe that sustained economic growth, poverty reduction, and employment creation will come primarily from the following sectors, agriculture and agribusiness, construction, information and communication technology, tourism, energy development, renewable and non-renewable, health and educational services. Accordingly, my government has developed a management framework to promote these sectors. My government will further help a medium-term economic strategy paper covering the period 2011 to 2013. Cognizance will be given in the preparation of the strategy paper to the existing National Strategic Development Plan. Additionally, a robust public sector investment plan will be formulated and the necessary resource requirements aggressively sought for its implementation. My government will continue the tax reform initiatives that commenced in 2010 and will seek to stabilize the fiscal policy regime. Efforts at revenue enhancement and mobilization as well as expenditure control will be continued. 
Government has also announced plans to undertake a major rebranding of Grenada as a destination. Policy guidelines will be developed for the commercialization of some tourism sites and priority will be given to the private sector. Additionally, our strategic marketing focus will be aimed at attracting visitors from Trinidad and Tobago, Barbados, United States of America, the United Kingdom, and Europe generally. Other areas of high priority will be dive, wedding and honeymoon, cultural entertainment, sports tourism, and the incorporation of tourism studies in the school's curriculum. Importantly, we will continue our considerable investment in airlift to support the development of the sector. Greater emphasis will also be placed on protecting victims of domestic violence and abuse, as well as children and the elderly. In addition, plans are being made for a family court and the juvenile center for young persons in conflict with the law. Preparations are being made for an amendment to the criminal code, making community service a sentencing option for young first-time offenders and also for the passing of the Child Justice Bill. Mr. Deputy President, Mr. Speaker, my government takes responsibility to our elderly citizens very seriously and will continue to offer support for an improved quality of life for older persons and to harness their potential to share a meaningful legacy with the rest of the population. In keeping with my government's policy of good governance, a unit has been established to adequately manage all safety net payments to vulnerable persons. Work has already started for establishing a central registry of all beneficiaries of safety net, a cash transfer unit, and a social protection policy on safety nets. Speaking at the start of a meeting of the House of Representatives, the Speaker of the House, George McGuire, said Grenada's rejuvenation must be expressed through the rule of Parliament and the policies of sound planners. Parliament in this new session must pass good laws which establish new programs that are beneficial, laws that improve the criminal codes, upgrade government standards, and contribute to the building of a better society. We have the power to make our own choices and shape our own future in the Parliament of Grenada. The reasons for optimism and confidence must be debated. The House of Representatives has given the Minister of Finance the green light to borrow $8,500,000 from the OPEC Fund for International Development. The Minister has also been authorized to borrow $8,800,000 from the Kuwaiti Fund for Arabic Economic Development. This was done when the House passed the Agricultural Feeder Roads Rehabilitation Project Loan Authorization Bill 2010. Finance Minister Nazim Burke says the bill will deal specifically with job creation. This project, Mr. Speaker, is a very important one. This project, like the, set, like the first phase of the Agricultural Feeder Roads Project, aims to enhance, Mr. Speaker, the socio-economic development of our country. It will reduce the cost for the operation of vehicles. It will facilitate transport. But perhaps even more importantly, Mr. Speaker, it will provide adequate motorable conditions for our farmers to take their inputs onto their farms and for the farmers to take their produce out of the farms into the marketplace. We cannot be speaking about commitment to agriculture. We cannot be speaking about developing the agricultural sector and agribusiness, Mr. Speaker, if we are not prepared to take action as a matter of urgency 
to resuscitate and revitalize that critical sector of the economy. And what this seeks to do, Mr. Speaker, is just that, to create the conditions that will make it more productive for our farmers and improve our, se our food security and the country as a whole. MP for Karakou and PT Martinique Elvin Nimrod told the Speaker that his side was not prepared to participate in discussion on the bill since they did not have the opportunity to go through it. But the Speaker says, given the dire need for employment creation in the country, he believed there was need to proceed. Two other bills were taken through their first reading. They are the Child Care and Protection Bill 2010 and the Domestic Violence Bill 2010. On a separate matter, Minister for Finance Honorable Nazim Burke says the ball is now in the court of construction company CCC to determine the next step in work for the Agriculture Feeder Roads project. According to Minister Burke, two out of three steps have been taken by government for work to begin, but they are waiting on critical information from CCC to conclude the contract. The second thing that ought to be done before work can begin is that an agreement has to be signed between the government of Grenada and the consultants, the Dewey consultants. Again, the cabinet has approved that document. The cabinet has approved the terms and conditions of that, um, of that agreement with the consultants. And uh, we expect that um, that document will be signed any day now. In fact, I believe, while I can't say with absolute certainty, I haven't been out for the last few days, but I believe based on the conversations that I've heard that our, our Minister for Works has already signed that document. Yes? So that is the second thing that must happen. The third thing that must happen is that a contract must now be signed, must now be concluded between the government of Grenada and the CCC for the works to be done. This is the schedule of works, the rate, the cost per unit of the roads that will be constructed, a contract saying what work will be done, how much is going to cost to build a mile of road and so on. Now up to this point, we have still not received from the CCC some critical information that we need regarding um, the cost per unit for the road construction. I think we have said before and we've heard before that the price per unit that was paid for some of the roads that were previously done were extremely high, Extre exceptionally high. The CDB did a study in which they concluded that this, uh, the CCC was uh, perhaps the most expensive road construction company in the world. Now, while we want the roads done, we have to agree on a reasonable price. We cannot be at any price because we must get value for money. And I'm saying to you, two of the three steps that must be taken for work to, be, to begin, um, that depends on the government, we have taken. The ball is now in the court of the CCC. Prior to Minister Burke's statements, former Works Minister Gregory Bowen publicly criticized the government for not commencing work on the Agriculture Feeder Roots project sooner. In response, Burke revealed that the previous administration left a debt of $18.7 million owed to CCC for works done. A loan was taken out by the Keith Mitchell-led administration to pay the company, but this was never done and the money has not been accounted for. Minister Burke says government had to rectify the debt and obtain money for the project before work could begin. We have signed a memorandum of understanding with the CCC concerning these payments. That is one of the three conditions that must be satisfied before work can resume with the CCC. First, the government must enter into an agreement with the CCC for repaying that $18.7 million. And think about it. The government is borrowing $51 million to do roads. $18.7 million of that must go to pay the CCC for work done years ago. So even before we start, the amount of work that we will get for this $81 million, $51 million that we are now borrowing is less, is 35% less than what we could have gotten. So we're starting with a deficit, thanks to Mr. Bowen, yes? But we have signed an agreement to pay back that $18.7 million over time. That is now, uh, an agreement is in place. In the same breath, the finance minister left some words of advice for opposition Senator Gregory Bowen. I want to suggest to you that you go back to Mr. Bowen and ask him to answer some of the questions. Ask him, above all, why is it that after two years, the government must now still be trying to find $18.7 million to pay the CCC for works done for which a loan was taken by the government, for which the government is still paying back that loan, and at the same time taking a new loan and having to take $18.7 million of that new loan to pay off 
for the old work that was done. After he gives you the answer, then we can talk again.